Please, the amazing grace. And it was supposed to be. And how great that was. You can do the next one now. In the middle of And this is a position some of us get in, get in problems in. God teaches how to pray. You know that, eh? Jesus taught us how to pray. In the middle of the night. I just guess I'm going to be in the No, I can't. You see, when your back it gets to get to the Yeah, I remember it of my Jesus told me how to pray. So I'll try and get the best, the best. Who art in heaven? Best at all. Thank you. 
standing on a solid rock. Stand up, do the power you call. Stand up.
leader of the National Congress of Incorporated Baptist Organizations, His Eminence Patriarch Will Jones. This celebration. But just to remind not only the spiritual Baptists, but to remind Trinidad and Tobago that on this day, I think it's the 24th, eight to ten years ago, in a place called Maruba, it was made to the Honorable Prime Minister a request. Let's get, and he adhered to that request, and so he took the privilege and the opportunity to recognize that we as a people have gone through a lot. Therefore, he thought it right that as the spiritual battles, we should receive something. And today we want to say to you, Honorable Prime Minister, we thank you for what you and your government has done for us. Today, not only just saying thank you, but in Balmain, opposite the Atomolden Stadium, we have erected an administrative building. A building that we are proud of, a building that we can call our own, our own home. And so, we look forward to the day when you, your government, will come and cut the ribbon and officially open that building. Why we look forward to it more urgently? Because I had the privilege to be at present here when this body is in house and offer prayer to reopen that building. And it was an honor to be in Barisenos. And so we say to you, we look forward and we look forward to having you at Barmede to open our administrative building. Because we thank you for what you have done, we thank you for what you are about to do, and we thank you for what you are going to do for us, you and your government, in the future. The spiritual Baptist as well. I sometimes, like this morning, I sat and I said, I think that the spiritual Baptists bear resemblance of the people's national movement. Why? Not just to lead it, but the way of our Karakam brothers and sisters, politically and geographically, economically, they look to the people's national movement and the government of Trinidad and Tobago, the rest of the Caribbean as the Caribbean God Father of Father. Similarly, the spiritual Baptist diaspora throughout the entire Caribbean look to Trinidad and Tobago as the Mecca of spiritual Baptists. There is those in North America coming to Trinidad sometime in August and they are advertising 
that they are coming to the mecca of the spiritual Baptist faith. And as a proud spiritual Baptist, we are proud to know that we can take the lead in creating an environment for the spiritual Baptist, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but throughout the entire region and by extent the entire world. And we are thankful to that because of you and your government and the footing and the foundation that you have given us. Praise God. Today's a day of giving thanks. Today's a day of saying thank you. Today is also a day that we need to remember because beginning on Monday morning on the 25th, we will be opening the spiritual Baptist entrepreneur village in Bambi. And we're going to have an entire week of events there. But I want to tell you and your government, just as a country is going through a crisis, we want to give you the assurance that the spiritual Baptist community stand with it. But standing with you, the number one issue we are having is crime. And just for you to know that the National Congress and the Archbishop Council, all the spiritual Baptists, we have all of our troops together and we have begin, we began to travel throughout Trinidad and Tobago because a call was made for the spiritual Baptist to return to the streets and to return to the wayside and share the message because only we, the spiritual Baptist, can bring some sort of a, a simplicity or bring this land back to what it is. I want to even extend to you that we have gone beyond the streets. We have gone even into the prisons. So we have revivals and we have wayside missions dealing with the very prisoners. So we started to do rehabilitation right in the prisons so that when they should return outside, they will do nothing else but God. And so we want to say to you, we are proud of you. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the wonderful team. As I said today, it's not a day to present any speech, but I'm looking at the team. I saw bread and I began to look for a little lamb. Then I saw the wine. Then I said, okay, I am in the upper room. Then I saw the king. And your honor ever help minister. I knew that he made a plea for us to eat healthy. So when I saw the king, my ears went up and I'm saying, let me listen up. But he couldn't help me. He had to say a word. And so I want to tell you, Honorable Minister of Health, that the cake is not only for decoration, but the cake is what we want to remind people that all we need is constant prayer. And I'm quoting from the word of a man. Prayer, if we pray, it must be like bread, something that we must eat every day. But when we look at the cake, it is only for occasion. And that is what this the cake today is only for this occasion. Rest assured, we are a healthy people and we are a healthy nation. Amen. And we pray this evening that God will continue blessing all of you, blessing our Prime Minister and the government of Trinidad and Tobago. We are not here to declare any great mysteries or anything. But what we want to tell you it is that you have the assurance that the spiritual Baptist diaspora is in fervent prayer. Not only for you, but for the entire nation of Trinidad. And so we welcome all of you on March 30th at 9 to a.m. Come with us and celebrate with us at Barbados, where we will have a time where we will give praise and we will give thanks. And you know, sometimes people say that the spiritual Baptist is so they, they, they care you die. That is a wrong thing. That's a wrong thing. You know why we have so many different celebrations? Because we are such a mighty people that we have not yet found a place in Trinidad where all of us would be able to come to. So we have to touch every corner. And so that is why everywhere you turn, on the march into church, you're going to hear Baptists shouting and having a good time. And that is the reason why. But we long that hopefully God be in our help. Because had it not been God on our side, we would not have been where we are today. We are a people that have gone through. We, have, we are people of resilience. We stand in the heart of time. We stand through the test of time. And you know what is even greater for me? Hearing that we are celebrating 73 years. 
73 years ago, I was in no way in existence. I may not even be a thought. But today, I stand as the spiritual head of those that my forbearance have labored and worked. And I stand as the head today to continue the journey. And all I want to say to the spiritual Baptist diaspora is that we will make it once more. We will make it. Amen. And I want to salute because for the entire week, I was looking at the social media and I saw a picture with Matriarch Dorothy and Archbishop Burke, Barbara Burke, sitting, I think it's at the Red House or at the Hall of Justice, seeking a holiday. So you, Matriarch Dorothy Berkeley, I salute you. <laughs> the entire Archbishop Council and to every spiritual Baptist throughout this Trinidad and Tobago. I want to remind you that office doesn't make me, but I will make the office. And I want to remind you that all I will be and all I promise you to be to you is to be a humble servant. That is all I need to do. Serve, and I will serve in honesty, in all faithfulness, and with the help of the Honorable Prime Minister and his entire cabinet, together, Dr. Keith Christopher Wobbley, we will make Trinidad great like we do. May God bless all of you. and we want to welcome them now. It is a piece by Dr. Earl Loveless, who is here with us. Let us welcome him. He's in the front there. Malik, for performance, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are the Malik Folk Performing Company, and we are very happy to be here to present to you excerpts from the Wine of Astonishment by our own Dr. Earl Loveless. This play tells the struggle of the spiritual Baptists to be free to worship in their own way at the subsequent repeal of the act. Malik Folk Performing Company excels from the Wine of Astonishment. Okay, let's open all the mics, please. Sound engineer, open all the mics, including the body mics, please. This ordinance may be cited as the shelter's prohibition ordinance. A shelter's meeting means a meeting or gathering of two or more persons, where in, whether indoors or in the open air, at which time the customs and practices of the body known as shelters are indulged. The decisions of any magistrate in any case brought under this ordinance as to whether the customs or practices are those of shelters shall be final 
whether the persons indulging in such customs or practices call themselves shouters or by any other name. These practices include the following. A. The binding of the head with white cloth. B. Holding a lighted candles in the hands. C. Ringing of the bell at intervals during meetings. D. Violent shaking of the bodies and limbs. E. Shouting and grunting. F. Flowers held in the hands of persons present. And G. White chalk marks about the floor. It shall be lawful for members of the constabulary force of whom one shall be a commissioned or non-commissioned officer without a warrant to enter at any time of day or night any house, estate, land or place in or on which such officer may believe or suspect that a shelter meeting or initiation is being held. It shall be an offence against this ordinance for any person to hold or take in part or attend any shelter meeting to be held in any part of the colony, indoors or in the open air, at any time of day or night. It shall be an offence against this ordinance to effect or to maintain any shelter's house or to shut up any person in any shelter's house for the purpose of initiating such persons into the ceremonies of the shelter. It shall be an offense. It shall be an offense. It shall be an offense. Never get buried. For some years, I can only feel I never get buried. Never get buried. Never get weary yet. Forty long years I won't feel and I never get weary yet. Never get weary yet. Never get weary yet. Forty long years I won't get any feel and I never get weary yet. Never get weary yet. Never get weary yet. Forty long years I won't get any feel and I never get weary yet. Never get
a black man wants to deal up in front of white say we wouldn't try it down. Oh. We preach the word. And who am here to hear to hear? Yes. We was good. Not the best, but good enough for people who bring their bare hands with us from Africa to take enough pressure to make weak people surrender. We was that good. Their schools that we are uncivilized yeah. and barbarous. They frighten away those who are going to their schools. They confuse the bright ones with their education. Mm. But even so, yes. enough of us remain. Oh, yes. Enough of us remain to sing the hymns yes. and make a joyful noise of the yeah. world. Yeah. And black people, Lord. Black people were still having dreams and visions and coming to us for baptism. Yes. I'm telling you. So, so, everything we do was wrong. Everything we do was wrong. They say we say it too long. We disturbing the peace. They bring six police with a piece of paper to make us move our church off the main street. We build a new one. They say it is not strong enough. They make us break it down. We try to build a new one. But they wouldn't pass the plan. So they had us running from pillar to post. Brother, from pillar to post. Some of the congregation dropping out along the way. But brethren, brethren, enough of us remain. And to ring the bell and to shout hallelujah when the spirit comes. Fire, 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 Please. 
out of mud. The roof covered with carrot leaves. A simple hut with no steeple or cross, with no white priest or Latin ceremony. What is beyond? Beyond, beyond. Black people call it. Yes. Government has one cent. One cent. Is he helping to build it? Two. Or are you going to mention it? The bell that we raised. Yes. When we call to the spirit, who money pay for it? We own, who? we own, we own. So brethren, the only miracle to save we people is to strengthen this church. Yes. Oh, yes. Make it a center, yes. a place we can fall for. Yes. 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 yes, now the day is Mr. You're obstructing the law. 
You want me to arrest you? You want to arrest me? Like you want me to take off your shoes and arrest you? of the body known as the shelters Until he come back, eh? enacted by the government of Trinidad and Tobago with the advice and consent of the Legislative Council thereof. One, this ordinance may be cited as the Shelters Prohibition Repeal Ordinance 1951. Two, the Shelters Prohibition Ordinance is hereby repealed. Yes. Passed in the council this 30th day of March in the year of our Lord 1951. For the deal, and the of what we yes. Rejoice in what we have created for ourselves and yes. for humanity. Yes. Yes. Beloved, reclaim, take back, and hold to your bosom Nadia, be quiet. your stray daughters and sons. Yes. 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 And make a place for them. Yes. You hear me? Yes. Make a place for them. Yes. And struggle in love. Struggle. Love. Forgive. And finally, my brethren, be you all of one mind, yes. having compassion for one another. Yes. Love us, brethren. Do not, beloved, do not be afraid to love. Do not be afraid to forgive.
fast along before we bring on our honorable prime minister I want to introduce to you a very familiar face to you known as the protector in the spiritual Baptist faith he's known as Bishop Legaton protector good evening Pleasure, good evening. Good evening. All protocols followed. Listen, all all you in Baptist in here, right? Yeah. All all you in Baptist in here? Yeah. All you something I got to show. All you in Baptist? Yeah. Right. Because we are Baptist, by the time I finish here, if we are trying far from here, we go baptize all you. All you even here just so this evening. Not at all. Um, let me just say very quickly, this is history for me. Because years ago, the father of this nation, when he pulled me from Lavender Hills, put me on a committee called the National Task Force of Youth, I promised him something. I will go and gain all the knowledge and experience possible, and I will come back and I will get back to my country. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to be here, having known the father of this nation personally to be given back to Trinidad and Tobago. I'm happy to do so. I'm a Baptist, I'm a Baptist, and I am so proud to be this. Play the music. And you could join me and you could sing and you could yell and you could do anything you want. Freedom, 
We keep shouting, freedom for spiritual healing. We no longer have to run from persecution, no. To worship in daylight, to sing praises in the moonlight. Finally, Baptist people have freedom of expression. Tell them, I brought a sword in my hand. I'm going to use it well. Let me hear you say, I brought a sword in my hand. Oh Lord. No more fear and no more not to lose. We have the right to pray in any manner we choose. We stay strong through mountains, high and valley, low, shouting, prancing, ringing with bells. Finally, we say so long to the ambitious times we know. Shouters no longer have to go through hell. That's what we sing in freedom. To keep shouting, freedom for spiritual healing. We no longer have to run from persecution, no. To worship in daylight, to see presence in the moonlight. Finally, Baptist people have freedom of expression. Say, children, walk the road. It's a lonesome road. Come on, children, walk the road. It's a lonesome road. Come on, children, walk. Children, children, walk. On this day, shout us from all over. Spiritually, we celebrate together. We took the floors. But stood up strong as a rock Till the Caesar and William to let them shout and see So getting this day Shouldn't come as a shock Man is high time that Baptist people be free That's why we sing in freedom We keep shouting Freedom for spiritual healing We no longer have to run from persecution no. To worship in daylight To sing praises in the moonlight Finally, Baptist people have freedom of expression. I see the lighthouse. Amen. I see the lighthouse. Amen. I see the lighthouse shining in glory. I see the lighthouse. Oh, I see the lighthouse. Amen. I see the lighthouse. Amen. I see the lighthouse shining in glory. I see the lighthouse. He said, Michael wrote the boat ashore. Michael wrote the boat ashore. Come on, Michael wrote the boat ashore. Michael wrote the boat ashore. He said, I want my one. Three by three, Jesus. Is it one by one? Two by two, three by three, Jesus. Then Thank you very much. That's the end for protector. And I ask you all to stand. The man himself, the man of the hour. As we welcome 
You can remain seated for a while, Dr. Rowley. It's standing for you. <laughs> As I hope you understand, because we are about to welcome to speak to the Spiritual Baptist community who are gathered here in their large numbers. I don't want to, to guess, but if I look, it looks like thousands of Baptists here at Barisi House this evening. I don't know of anybody else who could call a meeting like this, but you are here because you support the government, because you support our leader, and because when you heard you were coming to Balize House, you said, I could not miss that. I know that for a fact. I know, and I just spoke to a gentleman who said to me, it is the first time that he has ever walked into these yards. He said, this yard, he said it was the first time he has ever seen the Prime Minister, what he said in a real. <laughs> so for all of you who are seeing the Prime Minister in real for the first time, let us raise our voices and welcome to this podium the political leader of the People's National Movement, the Member of Parliament for Diego Martin West, and the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. The Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley. Rowley. I wanna dance, I wanna dance. I wanna dance like King David dance. I wanna dance. I wanna dance. I wanna dance like King David dance. I wanna dance. I wanna dance. I wanna dance like King David dance. I wanna dance. I wanna dance. Thank you very much. A very pleasant good evening to the gathering of Spiritual Baptists on Tranquility Street. The honor is mine to acknowledge this evening the leadership, patriarch, and all the leaders. And acknowledge also chairman and members of the executive of the People's National Movement, who once again join with you to celebrate and to continue the tradition, to continue the journey one towards an unfinished freedom. I also at this time would like to acknowledge the author of that excellent piece that we just enjoyed. We had Mr. Lovelace. I'm very pleased that you took the time to come and spend a couple hours with us this evening. But Foster is not going to get me involved like he did the last time. We had a singing competition in La Hoqueta, I think it was. And he lost. So he wants a rematch. There shall be no rematch. Because I I'm now a soccer artist. And a Baptist sanctuary is the road march. But ladies and gentlemen, we've gone over the time a little bit as we had planned, but how beautifully was it to spend that time this evening. To have listened to the music of the songs, to have watched and imbibe the spirituality of the performance of that excerpt from the Wild of Astonishment. To listen to the entreaties of the patriarch, and of course, to remember that history is an ongoing experience. I simply want to say to you, the people of the spiritual Baptist religion, that you belong to a country, as one Calypsonian said, with one set of religion, a whole set of religion. So religion is not anything new to us or strange to us. And of course, you by your presence and your history and your behavior, I see you more than just religion, you are culture. 
You are an integral part of the culture of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. But we live in a world not by ourselves. And to understand ourselves, we have to observe other people and also be knowledgeable of other people's history in order to be able to fully appreciate ours and the progress that we have made. I say often that the people of Trinidad and Tobago must be proud of our country because notwithstanding difficulties that we might face, there's a whole lot of good that we can point to and a whole lot of progress that we have made. It's probably one of the best examples of overcoming challenges in building a nation. And you strengthen our country by being able to say, look at us, look where we came from, look who we are, and look where we're going. We are going forward with you. Your nation is going forward with you. But nations don't automatically go forward. No, no, they do not. As I speak to you now, the CARICOM is meeting for the last hour, the umpteenth meeting, trying to find some way of bringing the Haitian people to some acceptable existence in a CARICOM nation. And we have to ask ourselves, what is the similarity between the Haitian people this evening in their despair and the celebration in Port of Spain of the spiritual Baptist? The similarity is oppression. It all has to do with oppression. Because oppression has been with us and continues to be with us. And that's why you have to be cognizant of what's going on around you. Black people in Haiti were enslaved, and just as you sang and danced for freedom this evening, they fought for freedom, literally, physically fought for freedom. And the Haitian army defeated the French army in the Caribbean. And the outcome of that was that the people who earned their freedom by fighting for it had to pay reparations to the oppressors who they had to defeat to get that freedom. You got your freedom in 1951 by an ordinance in the Legislative Council. Ladies and gentlemen, we have brothers and sisters who fought with blood and iron and still haven't got their freedom. In the richest country in the world, which is also our neighbor, just recently, people in that country, black people, oppressed, listed as being three feet of a man, teaching that you were in fact slaves, not that you were enslaved, but in fact you are inherently a slave, and took decades to come to a point where they were accepted, by a constitution to be a part of a nation that says all men are equal, won the right to vote, and today, in the richest, most powerful nation in the world, black people are still fighting for the right to vote. Ladies and gentlemen, the news from Gaza is the same thing, oppression. So oppression seems to be a common human condition. But here in Trinidad and Tobago, the government has understood as an independent sovereign nation that you, the spiritual Baptist, you were oppressed by the state. And therefore, you're not fighting for to vote in Trinidad and Tobago. You're not fighting for the right to be a whole person, but you're asking the government to pay a debt to you, to assist you, to lift yourself up. 
with some government assistance. And it's against that background that we have to acknowledge that the, the holiday that is a spiritual Baptist holiday, which the whole nation celebrates, is a good thing for the entire nation. But specifically for you, because your identifiable component of our fabric and your contribution is wrapped up in that. And the ordinance that spirit that spoke to your condition, lifting oppression from you, was specific to you, but the rest of the nation acknowledges it. And that is why we believe that had the state not intervened, you would have been a long, long way along the road. But as it was sung to us this evening in such beautiful tones, Father Allah, we'll know all about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the journey continues. And Father Allah, we'll know all about it. Today I heard that the grant that you got from the government, $10 million would, it was supposed to be 20. Cabinet's discussion was that it was supposed to be 20 encouragement and help to lift yourself to continue to build this nation but because you were more disparate you are more disparate than together and it seems as though you were destined always not to come together and to have an institutional structure the cabinet said we'll give you assistance of 10 million and some land in Balmain and see what you will do with it. I'm pleased to receive the invitation today to come down and officiate in opening a structure because you have built the headquarters in Balmain. You have built the auditorium in Balmain. You have built the car park in Balmain. And I think you are designing the cathedral, so you are, made, you are making good use and good progress farther along. And of course, you did ask for help with respect to a memorial ground. And the government which I led heard you, journeyed with you, and today you have your 10 acres in Rivulet Road, your memorial ground. The spiritual Baptist is moving along. And from this platform today, it is the first time I have heard from a patriarch that the spiritual Baptists are not scattered all over the place because they want to be leaders in every community, but because they want to be evangelists in every community. And in fact, they've got a headquarters and the spiritual Baptists are together. You're coming along. You're coming along. And that is why I've heard that the drawings for the cathedral lie somewhere and ready to roll. And the government is prepared to continue to assist to take you farther along. So on behalf of all the people of Trinidad and Tobago for whom your history, your culture, and your contribution is ours, whether you're baptized or not, the government will continue to build you as we build this nation. That's why I intend to ask the cabinet at the next session, having got confirmation that you've made full use of the first half to get you the second half. And somewhere farther along, we'll gather like this in the cathedral of the spiritual Baptist. There was mention this evening of the flagrant disregard for good behavior among most of our young people who have found themselves under attention by the police. Crime and criminality is a matter not only of news but part of our existence in Trinidad and Tobago today. I want to say to you, the spiritual Baptists, as I call out to parents across the nation to try and break the cycle of what is happening now by paying attention to raising your children. And if there's anything you can teach 
the people of Trinidad to be good. You, the spiritual Baptist, you can teach the people of Trinidad and Tobago how to raise their children with moral and spiritual values. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot that we have lost by destroying what we met, creating vacuums, and not replacing them with anything useful. We have been called upon to put an end to the threat that is violent behavior in Trinidad and Tobago. And if there's one group of people that we can call upon to go along the wayside, the byways and the highways, and knock on doors in this country, and call on the people of this country to take some personal responsibility for bringing around change, and bring our young people to appreciate the opportunities that are available, and to build the society that Dr. Williams envisaged. You, the spiritual Baptist, in your resplendent garments, you can do that, and you can help. I call upon you to help. Let the nation hear your voice. Let the nation see your values. And let the nation accept your gratitude. So today, in anticipation of your celebration, which happens to clash with Good Friday, Good Friday is a holiday, your holiday comes the day after, and then we go into Easter Monday. So continue your celebration next weekend. Celebrate. Reflect, commit, and be proud of our country, Trinidad and Tobago, because nobody in this country today can point to you from any office and say that you are not equal in every respect to every other citizen. Congratulations and freedom from in that fashion. And as we move forward farther along and you make good use of the support of the government and the nation, the sky is the limit. So go. Go in love. Go in spirit. Go farther in love. Thank you. Thank you. the end of our program and I want you to join with me to say a special thank you to the Prime Minister and the government of Trinidad and Tobago for the announcement just made by the Prime Minister. As we get ready for the freedom performance by Wasapuli, let us welcome them to the stage.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage to give a special of thanks. The Honorable Marvin Gonzalez, Minister of Public Utilities and Member of Parliament for Lupino Bonnet West. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremonies. I think I will start by singing a song for you that touched me deeply a short while ago. Yeah. Hear my cry, O oh Lord, attend now to my prayer. Let me hear you. Come and join us. On the ends of the to give God thanks and give God praise for a beautiful ceremony that we've all been touched by. I want to thank all of you for making this really, really special because we will all go to our homes, to our families, with the graces and the blessings that you have poured upon each and every one of us here today. Political leader and Prime Minister, I want to thank you very much for your very profound message, not only to us here in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as members of the People's National Movement, but to all our citizens in the Caribbean, especially our brothers and sisters in Haiti who are facing difficulties at this moment. Thank you very much, political leader and prime minister, for your very strong and powerful message. Let me thank my cabinet colleagues, members of parliament, for making the journey here today in this sacred space to celebrate the spiritual Baptist Shout out Liberation Day. I want to thank you very much for joining with our brothers and sisters in this sacred journey and this sacred space. Because indeed, their journey has been a journey of resistance and a journey of struggle. And as we are in the vineyards of God in this struggle to make Trinidad and Tobago a great place, we do that with the prayers and the support of our brothers and sisters in the spiritual Baptist movement. Thank you very much. A number of persons would have contributed to this great celebration here today, and I will mention them briefly. The Honorable Foster Cummings, your shepherd, your son. Thank you, Minister Cummings, for this great celebration here today in Balizé House. The person who sang our national anthems, Claudia Garvin, thank you for a beautiful rendition of the National Anthem. Let's give a round of applause. The opening prayer by Matriarch Dorothy Hercules. Thank you, Ms. Dorothy Hercules, or Matriarch, for leading us in opening prayer. The beautiful rendition of the St. Finbar's Spiritual Baptist Cathedral Choir. Thank you very much for your love, and thank you very much for your song. The Chairman of the People's National Movement, the Honorable Stuart Young, the Minister of energy for bringing us great remarks and welcome address your presence here today is also tremendously appreciated and may god continue to bless you as you go about the struggle of public service in trinidad and tobago the history of the spiritual baptist faith that was read by dr agatha archie carrington thank you very much dr carrington for imparting on us great information not only for us here in this great gathering, but for all the people of Trinidad and Tobago. The praise and worship by Sister Beverly Cardinez. Let's give it up for Sister Beverly Cardinez. Her moving rendition that touches deeply, deep in our souls. 
and of course His Eminence Patriarch Wayne Jones. Thank you for your loyal service to the people of Trinidad and Tobago and the adherents and followers of the Spiritual Baptist Movement. The prayer for the nation by the elders of Spiritual Baptist Faith, led by Deputy Patriarch Patrick Brown. Thank you very much for your prayers. Thank you very much for your intercession. And the Malik Folk Performing Company, your great drumming, and that skit that you perform so brilliantly. Thank you very much for the work that you continue to do in the cultural space for Trinidad and Tobago. Amen. And last, certainly, but not least, the Wasafoli for that great drumming that you have done a short while ago. Ladies and gentlemen, this has indeed been a wonderful evening here for us in Port of Spain, especially out of our newly renovated Balizé House. May God continue to bless and strengthen the members of the Spiritual Baptist Movement. I pray and I ask you sincerely to continue to pray and ask God's intercession for us here in the government, in the parliament, so that we can continue to provide good and sound leadership to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. We cannot do it without you. We cannot do it without your prayers and your intercession. And we will continue to rely upon your support as we pledge and dedicate our lives to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So may God bless on each and every one of you. May you go home safely. May you continue to bring about joy and your blessings to your family. May you continue to bring about blessings to all the streets and our communities all over Trinidad and Tobago. May we continue to dance in song and ring your bell and hold your flowers and light your candles as we brighten Trinidad and Tobago. God bless each and every one of you and let us continue to go with songs and praise of worship. Michael, roll your boat and run. How are you going? Hello. How are you going, Pastor? <laughs> Michael, this, this, this competition will be convened in La Hoqueta. Okay. Michael, roll your boat and run. Michael, roll your boat and run. Our ladies and gentlemen, just as we started with prayer, let's end with prayer. Give us five minutes of your time again. Let me just invite the leaders, all the elders to come to the front. Patriarch, Deputy Patriarch, uh, Mother Hercules, all the, all the senior persons, you know yourself. Come in front, please. Senior Baptist people, please come to the front. And we're going to have a short prayer to close our proceedings here and to say a word of prayer for our Prime Minister and the government as we close off our proceedings here. One thing I want to say this afternoon, I, I'm recommending for us as Captain now, Bishop Balagin. You do a very good job. Let me give a round of applause. God be me. We are some to win. And I know. Oh, 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 no. Oh!
beg you, Lord. We ask you, Lord. I beg you, Jesus, this evening, Father God. Get a cry. Touch the wicked one, Lord. Touch them, this one, Lord. In the morning, Lord. In the morning of joy. Amen. 